So let's start, yes, with my brother in smoke. Are there any other takers? The first four. So one, two, three. Are there any others? So let's start with these three. Yes, sir. Please yes. identify yourself and let's hear your question. Good afternoon. My name is Paul Nyuja Dalafu, and I report for Daily Statesman. Honorable, right, thank you very much. And uh, as a Ghanaian, we are worried about uh, the terrorist attacks in our neighboring countries and the fact that Ghana is said to be the target, possibly. But I don't know if the national security will be able to tell us as to whether how best they are able to secure unapproved rules. Because going to northern region, along the Togo side, there are unapproved borders whereby uh, people who relate to individuals in Togo used to pass instead of passing the right way. That's true. As to whether they are able to know how many uh, unapproved routes they are able to determine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So the question is, what are we doing about the unapproved entry and exit routes into the country as we seek to deal with the risks that we face? It's a solid question. Yes, sir. All right. My name is Eric Mawen Egbeta with TV3. There are a number of questions I want to ask. Uh, the first is a concern that has come up um, just this afternoon uh, from the Ola Cathedral up in the northern region. The Most Reverend Father there sought to question the narrative from our national security ministers or national security operatives. And the suggestion was that it appears we're being boastful in terms of the fact that we're going to crush military insurgents who try to make their way into the country. He was raising concerns that we're being boastful and that could incense the individuals to want to target the country. And so what's the response to that concern that it appears we're being overly boastful in terms of dealing with the security threats. And then you raised, um, in your submission, you raised the uh, concern that there are fears of a possible recruitment of some Ghanaians into some of these uh, insurgency groups. Do we have an understanding of how many Ghanaians may have been recruited into these insurgency groups? And have we been able to identify these individuals to help in dealing with that? And then, the last would be um, the alerts which went to the churches earlier on installation of CCTV cameras and employing of security personnel to the churches and the mosque. There are those who say that it was supposed to be confidential information to the churches and wasn't for public consumption. Is that really the case? As some say it raises concerns of such confidential materials leaking to the public domain and thereby laying bare our plans in dealing with the terror threat. And then the last one will be... That makes four questions. Yes. In December last year, at the airports, there was a bomb scare where there were, the, the army was expected to investigate that. Can we have some updates on that, even as we're asking citizens to come together to help us fight and deal with the threats of terror? Eric, thank you. There was another hand. Yes, sir. So I'll take, because he asked like four, I'll take you as a final for this batch before we go for answers. Yeah. Thank you very much. What's my your name, name, sir? My name is Musa Lansawi, GH1 TV. Hi, right, Musa, go ahead. Um, my question is in relation to what my brother asked in terms of the unapproved routes. I was in Boku for a couple of days, and one of the things I realized was that on the surface, we think everything is all right. But down there, there's so much bitterness. There's so much that people talk about. And from my own checks with my team, we realized some of the people we say they are insurgents who are very close to us in the Burkina side have contacted some chiefs in the Boku enclave. How are we trying to resolve the Boku situation such that the insurgents will not use that as a conduit to get into us? Especially because he mentioned that we know that they exploit already existing yes. fault lines. Yes, thank you. Uh, Musa, thank you. Uh, let me just quickly go over the questions. What are we doing about unapproved routes of entry and exit, especially at this time of increased risk? Eric asked about four questions. The first, I want to rephrase, but it doesn't change the question. How are we balancing message so that in one breath you don't sound boastful while you are providing the necessary assurances, but in another breath you are able to gets everybody on board. So how are we balancing message? I think that's a question there. Uh, he's asking whether we can give any specifics of persons who have been identified as having been recruited, and if we can even speak to questions of identity at this point. Uh, his third question, with your permission, I will respond directly. 
There's a school of thought that security matters are confidential matters and that they should not be spoken about publicly, including, for example, the alert that was given to churches and mosques. I want to add to that. Today we're having an open press briefing uh, about it. That obviously tells you that we don't share that view, that everything must be a confidential matter. There are some matters that you are able to put out there in the public uh, domain because you need more people to be aware and the benefit outweighs uh, the cost or the uh, risk. If you have followed what's been happening, for example, in the European conflict quite recently, they are very open about the intelligence reports because it helps in the uh, prevention exercise. So I guess it tells you exactly our view on that school of thought. Mr. Asmani, I hope I have your permission to respond to that question. Um, is there an update on the bomb scare at the airport in December? If there is, please share with us. And finally, Musa's question. Musa, with your permission, let me broaden it a bit. He's asking specifically about Boku. What are we doing to ensure that the underlining issues and the fault lines are not um, capitalized upon? But I want to broaden it. You speak about these people known to want to exploit fault lines. So what are we doing to ensure that the fault lines across a country, if it's ethno, religious, or economic, or whatever, are not prone to exploitation by uh, all of this? You can broaden your answer in that uh, um, sphere for us. Ms. Asmini. Thank you, Kojo. Um, Paul from Statesman talked about the use of um, unapproved routes. Um, for instance, along the Eastern Corridor, we're talking about some 600 kilometers. Um, we are using technology one. Uh, personnel have been increased, uh, and patrols have also been increased. Uh, why technology? When you have such a wide stretch of land, it's almost difficult to man every point of entry. Therefore, with effective technology, you are able to identify who is coming in and who is going out and when action needs to be taken. The issue of being boastful, um, uh, security and intelligence agencies always have a very difficult balancing act. Um, our prime responsibility is to Ghanaians and their safety. You at all times have to reassure them. And I stated earlier that yes, we have a very robust security and intelligence architecture and that lives and property will be protected. But at the same time, we also have to warn about the dangers that surround us as a country, particularly with happenings in the sub-region. So I, I think that um, it, it's, it's a duty to, to give that assurance. Um, if we tell terrorists that if you come to Ghana, we'll deal with you, is that boastful? Uh, I don't think so. Um, the issue of the um, bomb scare, arrest was made within, I think, 24 hours, um, and that individual will be presented uh, to court very soon. Um, it also reminds me of the need for education. If you saw the video, you realize that um, a lot of uh, 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 people were not, the agency that they needed to evacuate the airport, we didn't see it. Thank God it, 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 didn't, it wasn't a real bomb and didn't go off, but we would have had difficulties. And come to think of Apiece as well, we had instances where people were being warned of the potential uh, for that vehicle to explode. And we wanted to take videos and pictures. The need for a heightened sense of security is now, hence this campaign on Tuesday. Um, Musa GH1 talked about the Boko conflict. I stated earlier in, in my brief that clearly they use existing ethno-religious fault lines. And Boko clearly is an issue. If there's a need 
for us to unite as, as a people, this is the time. In terms of the measures, as you rightly, there's increased police presence there. There's uh, increased community engagement to try and bring the two groups together because we only have one Ghana. So government will continue to engage the parties and make sure that lives and property is protected. Thank you. There's a question about, uh, do we have a number of persons who we know have been involved the, in the, the, the idea of, of recruitment is a big one. And I also indicated in my brief that this is one of the reasons why Ghanaians, all Ghanaians and everybody in our jurisdiction has to be engaged. Because it could be your brother, it could be your uncle who's been radicalized. We have a very effective monitoring system uh, with our partners and our embassies outside and we are able to uh, uh, know who uh, the, the Ghanaians who are involved. We also routinely try and um, rehabilitate some of them that we are able to bring back. So there's an effective strategy to make sure that one, the recruitment doesn't happen, and two, even when it happens, uh, the debriefing and the de-radicalization that goes on once they return is effective. Thank you. I have some more takers. And this will probably be the final batch of questions. So if you are interested in asking a question, the time will be now. Uh, so let's start from the back and then work our way forward. Let's start from the back and work our way forward. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so let's start with him. We'll come okay. forward. Yeah. No, don't go. Don't go. You stay. Yeah, so. Yes. My name is Salom from the Finder newspaper. Um, two questions. Uh, sometime in 2013, uh, videos of uh, an unpalatable nature were blocked on social media uh, to prevent circulation. Uh, we know that these groups like to use radical videos. So is there a means by which we can notify authorities so that such videos which pop up on social media can be blocked? Um, secondly, there's so much focus on ethno-religious fault lines. Um, but in recent times, it would seem our biggest conflicts have been in the political arena. So uh, has there been engagement to, with the political parties regarding uh, how they, their conflicts can escalate to the wider populace through these means. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Hello, well, good afternoon. The family of Pukumi for Kingdom FM. But my question here, Bako, and uh, it's about this on uh, recruitment of Ghana for Nibia, he used some for this uh, terrorist attack. You now there have been concerns about these uh, guys at home who are streets in the soul. The same say day in day out say who who feel mad in a cross station ah, but some some loading boys who do traffic lights. My boys need to hold my own say. I'm more paper paper glass in him. I'm more for raising concerns say. I'm some some easy target say these terrorists when this may recruit someone into. I'm more jumpy day. The person who say who who is ah, I dey an amount to so so na abaye security in pin for so it's a fast answer. Medase. Medase. Nana. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Smani. Um, I have three qu short questions for you. We all know that there is influx of West African nationals here. Some of, the, some of them comedians. They come in the form of beggars, um, scrap dealers, businessmen, things like that. You know, so they can, like I'm saying, they can be agents for these people. What are we doing? Because they are all over the place. Everywhere you see them. And they can be a threat to the nation. And then my second question. Uh, is the police going to reintroduce roadblock? at our installations, our rules, and very vital places to check because normally they target some of these installations and, and the mining areas for that matter. Yeah, and uh, my third question, you agree with me that uh, Ghanaians as we are, we are very hospitable people. We are very we are what? Hospitable people. We are not too conscious about security. In fact, you see any foreigner entering anybody's house, nobody questions him here. How do the screening of some of you, how are we going to do the screening? Because, like I'm saying, anybody comes in here and just accept the person. Thank you. Um, I'll recap. I'll make a few comments and I'll invite Mr. Asumani to um, make some of those comments. Salom is asking, uh, 2013, 
it appears the state or officials of government um, interfered with a particular video that was circulating on uh, social media. And, and though you didn't state it, I think I can give some descriptive. It was of a sexual nature of, um, uh, I think, um, a minor in 2013. It's a matter of public record. And you are asking whether today same cannot be done for some of the um, worrisome content that is floating around. I want you to look at it in a broader context. Interference with media content in general. So if somebody is, for example, on radio in Boku, sharing commentary that has the tendency to escalate what is ongoing, are we of the view that the same question you are asking, the security apparatus should be able to go in and interfere with that, broaden the um, discussion a bit more? If somebody is on television and is publishing content of a similar nature. Because the moment you open the door that you want security agencies to be able to, today we may be, may I say, scared. And so this is the question and the suggestion. But the moment you open the door that you want security agencies to be able to go in and interfere with content, you have a broader discussion on your hands. I just want to broaden the conversation a bit even before Mr. Asumeni um, responds. And whether even today with the social media protocols, it is still as easy as it was in 2013 to block the path or the signature of a particular video with all the different platforms, he would respond. I just wanted to provide some more context. Um, again, Salom talks about our seeming emphasis on ethno-religious issues. But you recall we also mentioned economic, that they are economic, and you have introduced political uh, worries. The National Peace Council is doing a lot of work in that area. The democracy promotion agencies and CSOs are also doing a lot of work in that area. But I think there was something in uh, a point that was made by Mr. Asumani. Nobody can provide us better security than ourselves. We don't need to create the fault lines or heighten the fault lines and ask that what is somebody doing to correct those fault lines. So we as politicians, the kind of um, confrontations that we engineer, you are colleagues in the media, the kind of confrontations that you engineer in the name of encouraging debate, do they create fault lines for us? Do we create these fault lines and then ask somebody, what are you doing to help uh, deal with these uh, fault lines? Be they economic, be they of a political nature, be they of an ethno-religious uh, uh, nature. I recall an instance in which a group from one religious group attacked a pastor or so of another group because he was said to have made a prophecy about something. And you had media houses live on air granting interviews. What does that do to the kind of risk or threat that we face? So he will respond to it. I just want to provide some more context. Opoku, I want to respond to your question. So the Ministry of Gender and the Ministry of National Security working with the security agencies uh, have nearly concluded a response to this thing of um, street children and other persons on our streets who indeed uh, are part of the risk um, assessment. And I'm sure you'll see an execution of that uh, in the shortest possible time. Um, Nana was asking a question tied to that slightly. What is our view on the free immigration, particularly of ECOWAS citizens? Now at this time when we speak of these risks, what is our view of this and what are we doing to balance at the same time? He's also asking whether we should expect to see increased police and security presence on our streets in response. It will be good to get your view on that one. And he makes the point that Ghanaians are naturally not security conscious. How do we achieve that? Uh, but I guess that's what we are doing with you and through you that you have to help us to get the word out there and to make it a serious matter. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll end on this. When we say to make it a serious matter, I recall a, a, about a couple of years ago when we released from this ministry a statement that some persons had been involved in plotting a coup and had gone ahead to test explosives at one of our beaches. And these persons had been rounded up and were going to be processed before court. You also saw what happened. There was a laughing matter in this country, kitchen cool challenge. People were playing with it. Today, you've been following what's happening in the courts and the testimonies and things that are being laid before the courts. These things, colleagues, are not jokes. 
they are not jokes. In the countries where they have happened and they've taken lives, it's only after their lives are taken that people now come to the consciousness now, oh my word, we're playing with something. They are not jokes. So we pray you to make it a matter of importance in your newsrooms. To make it a matter of importance to your editors. Because if lives are lost, if people are not able to pay attention and help us and something happens, all of us will be responsible for it. So I, 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 I speak to you from the deepest parts of my heart that let's take this thing seriously and make it an issue. You set the agenda in this country. If you choose to put it on page 14, it will be on page 14 and we'll have a conversation about, I don't want to mention names, but we'll have a conversation about somebody else tomorrow morning on the front pages. But if you choose that this is a matter that you think we are all responsible for and you want to make it a major matter, our people will be better informed. In COVID times, the whole country was aware because you made them aware. This is a threat we face and we need your help. Bossman, please come to the podium. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, on the issues of the uh, videos, we have the National Signals Bureau that has been extremely proactive. Um, they would usually not announce when some videos are taken down or uh, persons are arrested. But be rest assured that um, it's one of the things that we do effectively. On the issue of political tensions, uh, the Honorable Minister rightly said, um, the terrorists usually exploit on government spaces um, any form of opportunism, they, they jump on it. It is therefore important that, particularly at this time, some have argued that uh, democracy and the relationship between government and the government is threatened. Throwing uh, uh, the misinformation machinery and you understand why political consensus, togetherness, and unity of purpose is important at this time. Uh, the day job of political expediency is, 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 is no longer tenable. That unity of purpose is important because any opportunity that they get, they were exploited. And the evidence is very clear in other countries where political settlement has not been possible, it's resulted in, in, in lawlessness and has been existential to the state. So that, that was an important question. Uh, Kweku from Kingdom talked about uh, streetism. I think the Honorable Minister dealt with it effectively. Uh, the idea of vigilance and the creation of holding centers, because the problem is that man, most of these are minors. And uh, it's important that um, you take good care of them. At the same time, you don't want it to be a pull factor for more of such people to come into our country. But heightened vigilance has been uh, the case with the security and intelligence agencies. The influx of um, West African nationals. Um, uh, Minister mentioned the ECOWAS protocols. Uh, we also have Ghanaians who go there. It is important that we manage it. You know who's coming in, who's going out. And at the same time, like I said, intelligence, vigilance, so those who want to come and do us harm, we apprehend them. This is something that keeps us awake all the time in the, in the security and intelligence um, agency. Uh, vital installations. Um, I'm sure most of you would see the high police visibilities. We also have some plain clothes, um, security individuals. Uh, most of our installations are, are protected because uh, like I said, um, evidence from other countries have indicated that anywhere they find vulnerabilities, they will exploit. Um, we've had attacks in churches, in mosques, in shopping centers, 
uh, amongst our, our neighbors. So um, yes, indeed, um, we have a high visibility um, along um, our border areas and most of the vital installations. Um, one question was asked about the proverbial Ghanaian hospitality. What we want to do, I mean, the, the tourist, one of the prime aims is to alter our way of life. So it's important that, like I said, we are proud people, we stay resolute, but also just be conscious of our environment. Yes, be hospitable, but still do some background check of who has come into your home, um, what they are doing, and if you find anything untoward, report it. It's important. I stated earlier, it could be an uncle, it could be your wife, it could be a brother. Uh, they are not going to come in with APCs and fighter jets. They're usually amongst us, hence the need for eternal vigilance. Thank you. So I want to say a big thank you to you, Mr. Asumeni, and your team uh, for being with us this afternoon. Ms. Azuma, I want to thank you for being with us. Colleagues, we are in your hands, and we pray you to help us get the word out there. Later during the week, we'll engage on some other matters. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. So Tuesday, 10 a.m., four courts of the Ministry of National Security. Please do join us as we uh, roll out in some more detail some of these activities. Tuesday, 10 a.m., four courts of the National Security Ministry. Don't come and hide there and take pictures. So you come, come, come. <laughs> Come openly, okay? All right, we'll see you.